not to be like the world and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. What's wrong with you people? I'm serious. Like, I can't shut up. If I don't say what happened to me, and if I don't, like, help people understand that, like, what happened to me is, like, not okay. Right. Like, because I know it's happening to other people. Like, they're planting thousands of churches a year. They are in, they're in Africa. They're in Ireland. They're in Canada. They're Australia. in the UK. They're in Australia. They're in America. There's seven churches within 15 miles of us right now that have the ARC banner. Can't say amen. You ought to say ouch. Hello, humble bees. Welcome to Tulips and Honey. Hi, humble bees. Welcome back to Tulips and Honey. I am your host, Lauren, and today I am joined by a very special guest. You guys know her from the group because she's uh, an awesome member of the group and also TikTok famous. So there's mm -hmm. the, there's the TikTok famous thing um, that she <laughs> do. This is Kristen Everett. I'm so excited to have you on here because we're going to be talking about a really fascinating but almost like less known situation issue. Um, within like the word of faith grouping. And this is not something I've heard anybody else deal with. So I don't know. I mean, like, I know there's a couple of folks out there that are dealing with this, but it's not like as widespread as the NAR apostolic stuff. People are always dealing with that. But this is actually, we're going to be talking about ARC. And that is Association of Related Churches. Yes. Right. Okay. So you've got some crazy experiences with those guys that we're going to be getting into. But before we get into all of that stuff, um, can you sort of share a little bit of your testimony with the listeners? Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I grew up inside of church. Uh, my parents were both uh, staff practically my whole life. I don't really remember ever not being inside of a church like all week, every week <laughs> we grew up. My dad did worship. He was an associate pastor for a while and then also um, the administrator too for a while mm -hmm. of a couple churches. We ended up in Spokane um, when I was probably in sixth or seventh grade mm -hmm. and have been here since. My dad was the associate pastor of a church and um, so it was um, actually a family friend who had hired him, which was kind of cool. And we were involved there. I grew up just kind of, kind of like the odd all yeah. like nobody really like I like I had friends but like I was always considered like not the right type of Christian friend so like I was right. always looked at like I was like the outsider um which led a lot to me being like really rebellious when I was um I started smoking cigarettes when I was like 14 years old I started smoking weed when I was 15 I started <laughs> Drinking. Was it legal here then? It was not legal oh, okay, here then. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. It's still not legal for 15-year-olds. Right. <laughs> um, we, and it was, we started drinking, we were drinking a lot. So I, I was a cheerleader, I was part of the popular crowd at school, and drank a lot. Um, and then I ended up getting um, in a lot of trouble right before graduation, and um, I was raped at the age of 17, and I lost my virginity, my virginity that way, oh, and um, that, like, just sent me, you know, so like I, I'm already not belonging to the church. I'm already <laughs> an outsider. And then I'm already doing all the things I'm not supposed to do. And then that happened. And it was really like the start of, uh, a downward, downward spiral, you yeah. know, um, it led to a lot of drugs, a lot of drug use, um, alcohol, a lot of sex, um, obviously outside of marriage, I was not married. <laughs> um, and then resulted in pregnancy. Um, I, did abort that baby at the insistence of my boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I I thought like, I, I thought it was done for. Right. So yeah. like you, you do these things and you, like, I knew who God was. Like, it's not that I like, didn't know, like, I still like to think that like, I kept my, my morals, which is a weird thing to say as, right. as I'm doing all of these things, like I'm still thinking like, no, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm fine. Right. right? You're not an atheist. So, right. Yeah. There's worse people. Right. Exactly. And so I, I was, I was seriously lost though. I was seriously lost and depressed and struggling hard. And, um, I ended up going to Oregon for like some sort of rehab program and coming back the same person <laughs> I was when I left. Yeah. Um, and I met my husband. So my husband and I met, and we were very bad 
kids, you know, I mean, we were still doing all the same things. We we didn't change at all. Like nothing had changed, but we ended up pregnant and um, I decided, all right, I'm done. Like, I'm going to stop everything. And so I did. And I married this man <laughs> who I didn't even know. Barely, like I barely knew each other. Like wow. we'd been dating like a couple of months. Um, I knew he was a Christian or at least he said he was a Christian. And I said, I was a Christian. Um, so we had that going for us, but, um, we jump into this and we just tried to do the best that we could, I guess, you know, we went back to the church that I originally was at, which, um, I was older. So, and I knew all the right things to say. I'd grown up in church. Right. I knew right. how to paint like a really pretty picture mm-hmm. on my dead corpse. Yeah. Like right. I was, <laughs> You were a pretty whitewashed I was very pretty whitewashed too. I had all the right words. I had the right mannerisms. I knew what to say and what not to say. Um, and I ended up pulling a job as the children's, the, so the assistant children's director at this church that I was at. Wow. Yeah. And Your vetting process, huh? Well, my parents worked for them, so oh, it was okay. kind of like... <laughs> She can't be that bad. Nepotism. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the same thing as salvation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, totally. I was not. I wasn't the person right. for that job. Um, I was, like, talented, right? So, mm-hmm. like, I knew how to sing and I knew how to dance. And I um, was good with kids. Right. So why why not, you yeah. know? So I did that for a while. And they have such a lack. I think of oh, yeah. help, you know, a lot of churches and for some of the churches, the reason why they have such a lack of help is because there's like a burnout effect mm-hmm. and you've got, and I hear this from a lot of, uh, a lot of ladies that are, are helping with children's church and stuff where they're just sort of thrown in there and there's yeah. so much pressure put on them. And every time there's a complaint, it's, so, you know, it's a, it's quick and easy to burn out. And I think that's, that's kind of portion why we see, um, the churches that are just desperate. They're like, look, you have yeah. a heartbeat and a pulse. <laughs> Can you please help? <laughs> it's totally burnout is huge and I was watching this church just die too you know I mean and they're wondering why they were dying and looking back now after everything I've been through I kind of I kind of lean on the understanding of you know you weren't dying your people were just getting stolen by these other churches that are moving wow. in um because our, our pastor was wonderful I mean, he's a wonderful man of God he always brought the word to us and um unfortunately I was just I call myself like a sleeper like I was like a sleeper cell (laughs) like I I I like that I was asleep Mm -hmm. and I like I just hadn't been woken up yet I didn't understand what the gospel was I didn't understand what he was doing up there I thought he was boring and you know all those things that kids sometimes will think when they're listening to this right yeah your heart can't desire those things of God if you're if you're still lost but yeah. we want to look like that that's exactly how I felt I yeah. mean I know exactly what you're saying whenever you see you, you had like the right words so not to like sound like I'm, I'm being silly about it because that's exactly how I was for 10 years there was nobody that would have said hey are you sure that you're a Christian because all the people yeah. that are you're surrounded with anytime you're around them you know the right things to say and so it's important for our listeners especially if you're like a leader or an elder in um in any kind of church to note that like there's there's people and steve lawson is he said this a lot of times paul washer says this a lot of times like why do you keep giving the same sermon everywhere you go and he's like because yeah. no matter where i'm at no matter how biblically sound your church is there's going to be sleeper cells yes like us that that are in there and so so yeah you're you're there you're you're already involved in this this guy is is teaching you solidly so um, take it, take it from there. You said there's yeah. people stealing. Um, I think that their desire to want to grow as well was a good desire. Right. It was fine, but they just didn't have the means. They didn't know what to do. Um, and so because of that, um, these new churches were popping up and coming into our area and they were exciting, <laughs> you know, they were exciting and they had this young crowd. They had, uh, worship that made you feel something you know what I mean it was it was emotionally driven and it was um current 
You right. know, you're not singing the hymns. You're not singing, I have a friend of God. What is that? I have a friend in God. Oh, yes. oh we sing that like every oh, Sunday. I remember that one. <laughs> yes. Or open me up. <laughs> yes. Uh, so they weren't singing that. They were singing the new stuff. Through this, you know, yeah, like, like you guys, we've had enough of the same song. Come on. Yeah. The yeah. new stuff. It's, it's exciting. And all that stuff. Yeah. That song. They've got these new songs coming in. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So I met actually the I would call her at that time I think she was like the children's pastor okay. it's changed since but she was the children's pastor at this new church and it was an arc church plant and we had met because our daughters were in the same class at school and so we went to a birthday party um, we ended up meeting and I was so excited because she was in kids ministry and I was in, in kids, kids ministry, ministry. Oh, and yeah. I was like oh like I have the opportunity to have like a friend right, right? who like yeah. understands what I'm going through so like that's initially like where I thought this friendship was going I quickly like realized that she wanted to like more mentor me oh, okay. and I was okay with it too like I was like oh, okay like she can do that I'm still gonna keep my position mm -hmm. um the bugs started dropping in my ear about like you should come to our church you should come and be a part yeah. of us you should come we're doing new things we're bringing new stuff wow. to the city come get involved um that's so ground fascinating level stuff because when you look into art and you start reading the stuff that they say that they're about it's almost like one of the things that they say they don't do Mm -hmm. is that they're not for like stealing other people's members, but that they're wanting to come in and that they're here for like, you know, non-believers and they're here for the community. But one of the things that I thought was fascinating is that they give money to these church plants. So you're, you're not just starting from scratch. Like most churches have to do, they have to come in and, and create all of this stuff. They need people yeah. actually giving to, to be able to get these new, the whole scheme here of the ARC is that they're going to send you with money. Then once you grow to a certain point, you can give as well. It's got to be intimidating for churches that are already there, but don't have those funds. Mm -hmm. I was really, really concerned when I saw that because basically what you have is a recipe for what you're talking about to, yeah. to take these people. And that can be really discouraging to pastors that are actually teaching truth. Yeah. So, so what happened there? You get these little bugs in your ear. I decided, and this is all me at the time. I, I mean, my husband, like he had stuff to say about it all, but I was running the show. Like I wanted to be in charge. I decided that I wanted to go and check this place out. I was like, oh, she has all these great things to say. It sounds amazing. Like, let's go try it out. And we walked in and it's kind of like the rest is history. Like, right. you know, you heard the music, you saw all the hands raised, you, you felt like the passion when you walked in right. there, right? It was exciting. It was exhilarating and it was new. Right. Like nobody else was doing it in our city. And if they were, I didn't know about it. Like why didn't anybody told me about, right. like there was a church like this? Like, what are you talking about? Like all organized oh, put together man. already. Wow. <laughs> it, it was impressive. Yeah. You know, it was very impressive. I, I quit the job at the church and I just started going. They put me in the kids ministry um, as the kids worship leader. And I did that for a little while and it just wasn't my cup of tea. I was like, no, I don't like this anymore. I, I want more. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's like their message is like, God has a purpose for you, but we're here to help you find out what that is. And it, it's confusing mm -hmm. because they don't really say anything else. They just expect you to kind of like put the pieces together to try to like find out what your purpose is. Wow. So you're, um, you're involved in all these, these ministries. This is a ARC transplant, right? Mm -hmm. Transplant? No, it's just an ARC church plant. ARC church plant. There yeah. We go. Okay. Walk us through a little bit of like what an ARC is, what a church plant is. And it, is there a difference between like people? Cause I saw that you can like sign up for this. Mm -hmm. You can apply, but there's like growth requirements. So you have to be growing yeah. at a certain rate. So what is the difference there? Um, and where does your, the church that you were going to uh, fall on that? So we were a church plant, um, which means we took, it, this is just from what I can understand. So um, there's church planters who are, they invest the money into, um, and then there's also our church family. Um, and on, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. 
I don't know. I think that they probably just partner in ministry. Uh, I don't, I think from what I can see and what I've looked into it, it just looks like they are signed on to their vision. So uh, they are like contributors to making more ARC churches. So they were like an already existing church who signed signed on on. with this. And then you get all the bonuses that come along with it. All the like, support financially. I mean, I know that there's a lot of things like that, like the assembly mm-hmm. of God and stuff like that, the SBC yeah. things to that nature. But the thing that's really um, strange to me for this is that they have lots of different varieties of, yeah. of uh, word of faith. It's all, it's all the prosperity gospelers, but um, they're not just one size fits all yeah. and their, their rules and stuff. Whenever we we're like, I was looking into the stuff that you sent me. Um, they don't really have like this, set rules that you would get like in an SBC kind of thing. It's almost like a a pervasive way where they're sneaking into these things. They're teaching Mm -hmm. people their ways of how to, how to grow your church, but there's some consistencies across the board that maybe we can get into in a little bit. But one thing that I did notice is that they surely don't mind reinstating pastors after they have uh, disqualified themselves. Yeah. So, um, from the little research that I did, because when I finally discovered what was kind of happening, I did my digging. Like I did my research. It's hard to find. They've done a good job scrubbing the internet. Buried. It is. Um, You're not going to find it on the first page of anything. No, 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 you're not. But you will find 15 ads for their stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, just, just the research that I was doing to just find out anything negative about them, any kind of criticism. Right. It's buried so deep. You have to go to their individual churches. It's a great way to protect the organization because, yeah. oh, well, that's just one church. You can't, you can't judge us all based on that one church. Right. Well, and the problem that I saw immediately when I started looking into this is, okay, who is in charge here? Right. Right. So, like, I looked at who was in charge and then I kind of made my way down that list. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm looking at the connections because we know from NAR stuff, like their teachers, they're all connected. Yeah. They, they all know each other. Yeah. They all speak at each other's churches. They right. all do functions together, conferences and whatnot. And I'm seeing they're all connected. They're yeah. all buddies. And so I'm watching who we're promoting from the from the platform. It's not called a pulpit. It's called a platform because you reach people from a platform. You preach to people from a pulpit. Yeah. That's disturbing. Yeah. But they're saying these things. They're they're not hiding this from anybody. This is their pitch. This is what they're offering. This is a, your grandma's church kind of idea. So that that's disturbing to me for sure. Yeah. But from a a lost person that just wants to be a part of a group, Mm -hmm. that's probably really um, enticing. Well, yeah, that's what was enticing for me. I wanted to be a part of something bigger and I wanted to be a part of something that mattered. Right. And so I saw this church that was getting involved in the community that was um, doing so much for the people of my city. And I'm passionate about that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So like, why wouldn't I want to sign on on this? And the longer I was there, the more they were doing, the more money they were investing. And man, it feels good. Right. You know, you feel good when you're doing it. And it's the theological stuff, the heresies, if you will, because there were quite a few of them. They totally slip in unnoticed. I was talking to this one girl and she called it a, a mutt wolf. Right. <laughs> because because she came out of an art church and we were just chatting and she said, yeah, because it's NAR, it's Word of Faith and it's Prosperity all married into yeah. one organization. And it's very deceptive yeah. because everything looks so perfect on the surface. You don't outright hear heresy coming from the stage. Right. You hear things that sound like weird, but then they're like explained away like, oh, that's no big deal. Yeah. Like we just say that because. It sounds yes, good yeah, or right. because it, we want to reach people. Why wouldn't we call it a platform or right. um, it's not that big of a deal. You're just being legalistic. Yeah. If you don't like the, exactly. Yeah. Do they have any kind of accountability where when they do say something heretical that there is a group of elders or anything? Cause I couldn't find anything online where you were going to be kicked out of yeah. art for anything other than actually going against art. Right. And they don't talk about that, but we um, know what, what actually happens. No happens. What happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, honest, honest to God, I have no idea. 
Wow. Because it wasn't talked it. about. Yeah. I couldn't I, find anything on it. I didn't know who was an elder, who wasn't. I know that they, towards the end of my time there, they talked about wanting to bring more people on staff, but I know it's not the same as having elders, right? right? There was never anything that was visible to see for me. I'm sure if I asked, I would have been told who the elders were. Um, honestly, that wasn't something that I was paying attention to when I was there right. though. I barely got like four Bible verses out of a sermon. So wow, yeah. So you were already dealing with a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Um, the weird thing to me about all this is that there's so much information about how great they are and how, mm -hmm. how much they have to offer, what they're doing in communities. Yeah. But when it comes to these kind of details, it's non-existent. Yeah. And, and it's not like we haven't dug for it. So I, I don't understand why these kind of things aren't available. And it's got to just be a way of making sure that they're covering their own behinds because each church then is held accountable for their own thing, but they're not holding one another accountable. Right. So like, oh, your church wants to have elders have elders, but our church doesn't feel like we need to do that. Yeah. They get to do their own thing. So it gives the appearance of, of accountability without any actual accountability. Right. And they have a lead team is what they call them for ARC. So like you have your president and then you have like your, your team, like those team lead positions, they are concerning because they're all different church pastors. Oh, wow. And so it reminds me of like a pyramid. It's a pyramid Excuse scheme. Me. That's what's been going yeah. in my head. So like there's like Christine Kane. She's right. one of their team leads. Which is a red flag. A big red flag. Okay. Um, that was one of the first red flags that I, because she's who she is. And right. I've seen her everywhere. Oh, Rick Bezet. And I'm not very familiar with him, but the name, when I looked into it, I started to This is what you have to do with these guys. Some of the things that he would teach. Yeah, you and have to individually concerning. look mm -hmm. into all these because they have so done a PR job mm -hmm. and the connections that they have legally, like their legal team yes. that ARC has is, is just bar none. So bro, that's actually a thing you can pay to have done to your yeah. online image. So they have clearly done that. And they're going to have to keep doing it because they keep on having pastors ending up in, in sin and disqualifying themselves. And unlike, this is, this is pretty sad to me that if Carl Lentz is doing it better than you, there's something wrong. Yeah. Because he stepped down yeah. and apologized. And so far now, hopefully this is, I'm not going to have to eat my words later on, but so far he hasn't rebooted, whatever they want to call it, put not back in I've there. Either, yeah. But art pastors that are um, caught in plagiarism or inappropriate relationships or whatever it is, they just get sent to a different place yeah. and put back in there. And so um, there's, there's a lack of accountability. That's insane. Right. You have to look into every single one of these leaders. So you got a team leader like Christine Kane and mm -hmm. Chris Hodges is Chris a big Hodges, one. So yeah. church of the Highlands is one of their flagship churches, I would call it. Right. Um, he was actually one of the original recipients, recipients of right. the loan program. So it started with this one man, Bill Hornsby, I believe his name was, and then he invested in two different churches. Um, and then those two churches, all, the only the only requirement was that they invest that same amount of money into other this, churches. This is so a pyramid scheme. It is. It's one hundred percent a pyramid scheme, and yeah. like they have their training manual is impeccable. It is, it is insane mm -hmm. the steps that they they have a book. Yeah. This is disturbing to me because the end game here is that the original folks, just like with any other pyramid scheme, the original mm -hmm. folks, because it's not a investment as in here you take this money and we don't expect it back right it's it's that i mean whatever we put into you you have to put into other churches but also there's there's fees yeah. that come along with being members of this uh organization not that you're going to find them listed anywhere because yeah. i couldn't find any information about what they were going to charge you down the line but they make sure that you're successful in your towns and unfortunately, like you mentioned, they're getting successful by taking people from other churches that might be actually teaching solidly. Mm -hmm. So we're having this crazy shift in this country where, and, and they talk about it all the time in the news where, oh, all these churches are shutting down. You know, every yeah. week, so many churches shut down and this is the de-Christianizing of America. But actually what it looks like is these guys have gone city to city. Mm -hmm. 
and they take the members from these smaller, hardworking churches, and those churches have to close because they've taken loans to yeah. keep their building open. And, and so it's affecting the Christian community in ways that we wouldn't actually recognize. Now, we don't want necessarily a whole church full of unsaved people anyways, but what we right. do want is unsaved people hearing the actual word. Yeah. Preach solidly. Did you have these guys, these like Kristen Canes and stuff, were they influencing what was going on in your, in your arc church that you were in? You could definitely see the example that they put forth in their own churches mimicked in our church. So the way that, um, we did worship, right. It would look very comparable to an elevation worship experience or a church of the Highlands worship experience, which was called the worship experience too. Um, towards the end, they actually changed the name of the worship pastor to the worship experience pastor. Um, and it was the worship experience, not the How cute. worship service. Um, these were all red flags, yeah, like huge red flags. And I didn't know where to look because I'd never heard these things before right. though. Um, but yeah, you would walk into this church and it would look very similar to, I would say, if you walk into Elevation or Church of the Highlands, actually exactly like Church of the Highlands, because that was our main model is what we modeled after was Church wow. of the Highlands. Even after everything that happened with Hodges. Like, yeah. Um, so we had to watch videos of Church of the Highlands. We had to watch what they were wearing. We had to watch their stances, how they would stand, wow. how they would move. Um, well, into worship um, service. So we had to mimic that. So on stage, we had a box that we were allowed to move inside of. We could not move outside of the box. Um, and it, it's it's crazy, right? Yeah, the other thing that I thought was really weird, you told me that they, uh, they had specific types of clothing that you yes. needed to wear and you couldn't wear anything more than once a month. A month. Yeah. That's that's insane. So they're restricting what you can wear because right. it needs to be not appropriate, but... Fresh. Fresh. New, trendy, yeah. very hip and in. They wanted you to look like somebody who, if anybody walking off of the street were to walk into our church and see us on stage, they wanted us to look like people that you could approach easily and who you want to model your life after, kind of. So if you walk into a church and you see like a homeless man and somebody who has the height of fashion on, who are you going to go to? You're going right. to go to the homeless man or the person in the height of fashion. Right you're going to go towards what looks good, not what looks poor. Yeah. And that's something that they thought very meticulously about to where that's what you had to wear. And it was even the greeters too. I had one girl, a part of one of my small groups who came to me like just in tears because she said that one of the leaders came up to her and said that she can't be a greeter anymore because she doesn't have the right look. Wow. And she just was like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like, what am I doing wrong? And like, I can't, like, what am I going to say? Like, I'm following everything that they're telling me to do. The weird thing that I heard, and this might just be elevation, um, was that they had contests to see who could lose the most weight, who could. And this is, this is like the, the worship leaders and all, anybody that's going to be on screen that, um, the way that they kept everybody in shape was to compete over how fit you looked. You got Stephen Furtick getting a haircut literally every Saturday. Yeah. So that he looks the same every Sunday. Working in those kind of situations where you're dealing with the pressure of not only do you need to sound perfect, you need to be on point, you need to be right where you're supposed to be. Also, you need to look perfect and yeah. you have five children. Yeah. So that must have been very <laughs> difficult and stressful, especially uh, if somebody's coming to you crying and saying they literally told me that I can't help anymore because I don't look right. Right. I was so like hungry for their attention. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to work as hard as I could in order to be saved. I still hadn't heard really the gospel in, in its entirety. I, I would say I, I heard a couple sentences on Christmas and Easter, right. you know, about the birth and the death and the resurrection. Um, but not the gospel in its entirety, not in its whole wonder that it's supposed to be given to you as. Right. You know, it's it's different to hear, oh, yeah, Jesus died for you. Cool. Well, I'm going to go keep living in sin. Right. Thanks. Because he yeah. died for me. So now I can do whatever I, I want to do. do. Want. Yeah. And yeah. it was putting me in this state where I was just in just the most despair. I remember one night we, they do um, 21 days of prayer, two times a year. It's a prayer and fasting that we do as a church together. And I'm like sitting on the church floor and what it is, is just they play music, emotional right. music, and we all sit and we pray in our own little respective areas. So I was sitting on the floor and I was like listening to the music and crying, like just bawling into my hands. Like I wanted to know what God had in store for me. Like, 
what is your plan for me? Like all these people kept telling me, oh, God spoke to me and I'm meant to do this. And God told me this and I'm meant to do this. And I'm like, why isn't God speaking to me? What is wrong with me? Like, and I am just like in tears and crying and I go home. My husband... (laughs) he just was like, what's the matter? And I like, wouldn't talk to him about it. Like I was already mad at him. My leaders had already told me he doesn't want to get involved. You know, he's, he, if you don't get involved, then you're outside of our blessing, stuff like that. Just some, just weird stuff. And so I was already mad at him. Right. Like, oh, and they got a really good picture of me too for (laughs) their, on their board during that, like of me crying into my hands. Wow. Like nobody came and talked to me. Like it's a great photo op. But oh, we it's don't a great photo op. Care what's going on? <laughs> right. And that's very manipulative too to hear that they're like pitting you against your husband because he's here. Here you are. What you want is to just be approved of, right? And this right. Is actually, a problem that a lot of uh, women have that we, if we grew up in a certain way where we didn't actually have like that, you know, perfect little leave it to Beaver parents that mm-hmm. that we really do struggle with needing to be accepted. And told like it's okay to be who you are, yeah. and so if you're trying to be accepted into this group, you're trying to work your way up yeah. in, into the the ranks. You want your husband to put the best foot forward, right? Like, right. Hey, you need to be helping me out here. I'm trying. I'm yeah. I'm working my butt off here, trying to get a, approval, and I'm being told that because you're not doing things right. But you know, I yeah, and they never it. would say that, but there was like hits towards right. it. You know what I mean? So like it was never outright if your husband didn't get involved so you can't do wow. it. Just but a manipulative little Yeah, and so it was it. so hard to decide like am I hearing right? Like is this biblically sound or <laughs> is this manipulation? Right. Like it was hard to tell and I I came home and I was like falling and Adam was like listen to this one guy Right. So he's like, listen to this guy. I've been listening to this guy. You're going to love him. Turns on Paul Washer. Wow. And I, oh, I threw a fit. I was like, who is this man? Why is he so conceited? What is wrong with him that he has to stand up there and accuse me of this kind of stuff? Like I was oh, not having it. I was so mad as can get like so mad. And he was like, okay, maybe you're not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets me with a, what's her name? The Jackie Hill Perry, right? right. Jackie Perry Hill. What? which I can't remember which way it goes, but it gets me with her. I was like, watch this documentary. It turns on American gospel. And I, when I tell you that our house was silent for a week, like silence, like I watched that documentary from front to back probably 15 wow. times, like in a week. And I didn't say more than like maybe a couple of words to him. He's, he's like, oh, did I break you? Are you broken? <laughs> Not, reboot. I reboot. yeah it was crazy because like I didn't know what to I heard the gospel like presented in a way where like I couldn't ignore it like we were talking about like the sleeper cell right. earlier like it was like okay sleeper wake up Turned on. yeah and wow. uh, my eyes were just like completely opened to everything and when I tell you like the like when we talk about like total depravity mm-hmm. I felt like the biggest wretch right like in the entire world I felt like wow look at what I've done. Right. Like, look at what I've made God into. Look at what I've made Jesus into. I've been living for him. Yeah. Right. Right. Like I've been living selfishly for myself and it was, it was the craziest, most wonderful, yeah. but craziest thing that I've ever. Cause you're hearing that like you not hearing it, but you're learning about this and your depravity at the same time that you're also learning that God will freely forgive you. It's amazing to hear about your, your wretchedness in light of God's righteousness. Right. In, in the fact that um, he, he saved us graciously because there's an imbalance that we find here in a lot of churches where they can be like one side where they just tell you about the love of God. They don't tell you about your own depravity or they just push the depravity and they don't tell you because l- l- listen, natural man, um, like you and I, we just, we were just talking at the beginning of this. You sit and tell me how horrible and terrible I am and I'm unsaved. All I'm going to be like is, but yeah, Hitler was worse though. Yeah. So that's not going to help an unsaved person either. That's why the full counsel of God's word is so helpful. Right. And it really is a tremendous difference whenever you hear, oh, what I deserve is hell. Mm-hmm. What I deserve is, is to right now be to be punished right now and right. all of the blessings that I've had my whole life I didn't deserve so every time I got to just enjoy like a meal I didn't deserve that right in light of the fact that God is holy and righteous and and then he sent his son that's an incredibly impactful thing right. and I don't know but even whenever that first um whenever I got saved and that first occurred to me I thought everybody's gonna be so excited to hear this yeah and that's just not the case. 
So to uh, walk us through what happened oh. then um, and, and what it was like having to leave uh, oh, these man. churches. I'd say it took me about a year after watching American Gospel um, before I before I left. I dug for resources um, to try to help me understand whether or not I was in a false church because I still didn't know. Right. If that makes sense. Like, I still was so confused. I mean, there was all the, the conflict of, of doctrine in my in my mind so I'm like trying to like go through everything like can I speak things into existence <laughs> um yeah you gotta be deprogrammed it it was crazy. totally yeah. and I felt crazy yeah and like that's probably like the one thing that I would say for anybody that is like going through this kind of transition like you're not crazy like <laughs> you're not crazy like it just, it just feels, feels that way, that way. Yeah. <laughs> because you like do that, yeah. and I was so I was leading a small group of women at the time. And I decided that they asked me what my curriculum was for that. And I put the Bible. <laughs> I was not. Like, <laughs> Something is wrong with Kristen. <laughs> I'm surprised that like they didn't question it because right. like everybody was doing like the Enneagram stuff. Like there was oh, one wow. girl who was talking about um, the spirit world and oh. like talking with the spirit world. And I was, wow. and like, here I am. And I'm like, I'm using the Bible. Like we're talking about Titus Look at you like go. Titus women, wow. like what this means. And, and they loved it. Mm-hmm. Like they loved it. And it was so encouraging because like they like ate it up. I remember one lady telling me like, I haven't heard anything like this before. Like wow. they're starving. They're, they're, they're spiritually starving. Yep. And they, and like this, this specific group, like I had a couple of younger ones in there, but it was mostly older women, which I thought was super weird because I am young and I have been taught to, look to my elders from my old back church background. Right. right? So like we're told to look to our elders and our elders are supposed to lead us. I still had like that nugget of truth in me. And so like when I had this group of women, I remember telling my husband, I was like, I'm not qualified to talk to these people. Wow. Unqualified. Yeah. I totally hashtag unprofessional. (laughs) Like, (laughs) um, I was not, I was not qualified to talk to them, but here I am like giving them the word in a way where they're just like, I have never heard this before and I would walk away like so encouraged and so like I thought like maybe if I wrote the perfect letter if I wrote the perfect letter explaining what I saw what was like that was wrong inside of our church that they would hear me right like that they would be like oh yeah I see that I can't believe I didn't see that um it's just you're you're believing the best in people at this point like it's just that they haven't heard it like I've heard it and if I share it with them yeah I had that same experience where you you just think I I'm just going to share this with people and, and they're going to understand and everybody is going to be as excited as I was. Right. So you write this perfect letter. Do you take it? And at this point, have you, um, have you attempted to talk to them about anything yet? No. no? Okay. No. And were they open to even questions? I remember when my husband was asking questions before we got saved, he was told you have these questions cause you don't have enough faith. And if you just had enough faith, yeah. you wouldn't have these questions. And so it was discouraged. I was still confused about what I was learning and I was still, um, my turn of thought was they love God. Right. And they want the truth. Look at how many nice things they're doing yeah. in, the, in the community. I yeah. was still coming out very much so of that deceptive, like manipulative kind of grasp that they had had on me. Yeah. Um, so when I was writing my letter, oh, I was so kind in it. And like, and we are supposed to be kind. Would you recommend other people if they're in an ARC church that they go this route? Yes. Okay. But just because it's be hard, <laughs> but you need to know what you're getting yourself in line for because yeah. it, I met first, I, I requested a meeting with our, our lead pastor, him and his wife. They're both the co-lead pastors of the church, which I found out later was wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Female version of it. That Every exist. ARC church that you look up will have a co lead pastor and it's the pastor and his wife are both wow. co-lead pastors. No, I mean, 99%. I have not wow. seen one yet that has not been like that. Wow. Um, so I, I put in a, me- a meeting um, request, wow. um, didn't hear back. So I ended up meeting with my worship pastor who I had formed, I thought was a really good relationship with it over the years. I sat down to talk to him and it did not go well. Um, he said that I was removing myself and my family from their spiritual covering and that in doing that, that I was opening myself up for spiritual attack, that my kids um, were going to be under spiritual attack and wow. that 
oh, and he was really upset with me that I, I hadn't talked to any of them about this stuff that I was learning, that I just decided to take it up on my, on my own. Um, How dare you? Uh, well, and when I came back with, to that with, I, I needed meat. Like I wanted to like learn something and I feel like I'm not learning. And he goes, if you wanted meat, you needed to feed yourself. You're not going to get that here. But I did feed myself and you just told me it was wrong. It was but now I'm confused. very confusing. Yeah. Very yeah. confusing. I left that meeting. Like my head was like reeling. I felt like a ping pong ball. Like I just like right. ding, 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 like back and forth. Like I, I was like, what just happened? Yeah. Like I went, did not go the way that I planned. I went home. I was like, I think we left. Like, <laughs> Cause I didn't let my husband come with me. Cause I thought he like wanted to come with me so bad. And I was like, no, I need to do this by myself. Like I was still like feeling like this is my, this is my fight. This is my battle. This right. is my battle. I need to take this on. Sure. Oh man. I, we left and we didn't go back after that meeting. I'll, I'll say, and my husband bless his soul. He's so, I love my husband very, very much. <laughs> um, he's gotten a lot of attack too. Yeah. just for being himself because he's very bold yeah. and he listened to one of their sermons in the following weeks. And, um, one of the women pastors was preaching and everything she was saying was just so far out of bounds from biblical scripture that he decided to comment on it and on like the live stream video. And, oh, they were so mad. Like, cause he was like, that's not in the Bible. Right. That's not in the, because like you look at their live feed and it's like tons of people are tuning in from all over the world. Right. And he was like, I can't sit here and listen to this and not say something. And so he started saying stuff and we got a request from the lead pastors to finally come and meet with them after that. Wow. Um, yeah. After he started saying, this is kind of ironic because the ARC website actually has a blog explaining how to handle criticism. And you know what's not on that list? Any of the stuff you're about to tell us. Basically, what their little blog says for ARC pastors, if you're criticized, you should just handle it lovingly and just, you know, show people how to live their lives by being so loving to that critic. But that's not what you actually experienced. And since there's no sort of actual accountability, nobody is going to be getting in trouble for the fact that they were not loving. So, so you get called in, walk us through. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Whenever you first told me this, I honestly had never heard anything outside of the cults like this. If you're involved in a cult that they will tell you, you can't, you can't study scripture on your own. You need our interpretation of it. Like um, the Catholic church says you can't, you can't just interpret the Bible on your own. You need the church's interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. But the Protestant churches are not supposed to say these things. This yeah. is not how it's supposed to be. So all the stuff that you're about to tell us about what happened after this point just blew me away that this is happening. If you guys have experienced this, if you're listening to this and you know exactly what Kristen's gone through, please reach out and let us know. Because one of the things that I was concerned with is that there were a lot of families dealing with what you've been dealing with that have no idea that there are other families going through it too. So yeah, well, yeah. Walk, walk us through what happened then. I wrote another letter. <laughs> I'm a letter writer. Did and they read the last letter? Like the, the one that you... I don't know if he ever read it. Okay. I, I tried to read it, but what happens with me is like, I get emotional, like mm -hmm. super easy and like, I'll start to cry. Yeah. And once I start to cry, it's, it's all over. It's hard to, to <laughs> even, yeah. We, you get so upset about these kind of things, especially when you've been manipulated for yes. so long that the emotional response is actually just like exhaustion, emotional exhaustion. It is. From all of 100%. this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. But then you get home and you're like, I had so many good things to say. And all I did was, was cry. Yep. Let me just send you a letter and then yeah. you read it and then send it back to me. You know what? I'll just, I'm going to hang this on your door. Um, <laughs> then I got nail it to the door. <laughs> 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 so you write them another letter. I wrote him a letter and I full like so we walked in there. This time I brought my husband. We go in and we sit down and um one of the first things that we wanted to lay the groundwork for was like the gospel. What's the gospel? Mm -hmm. Because we're told if you hold the biblical gospel, you are automatically brother and sister. That's right. what I've been that's that's what I've been hearing, right? That's what they were saying. Too. Um and so I Wanted to know what they said. They said everything correctly, 100% correctly. Um, Which Benny Hinn will too. Yeah. Right? Like, well, there's a lot of false teachers out there that will 
articulate the gospel right. really well. And in a very precise and exact They've verbatim. Been trained. They've, <laughs> They've been, been trained <laughs> on what to say. They have. They have been like, I know this trick. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they said the, the gospel. We agreed on that. And then the next words out of their mouth was, who hurt you? And it took me by surprise because I, when I walked in there, I was like, I want this to be a theological discussion. Right. I have questions mm-hmm. and I would like some answers. Like yeah. I had been out of the church for like maybe a month at that point, if that, and I wanted answers. Like I'd never gotten any of these questions answered and I wanted to know. Um, and they, no, no, who hurt you? And I was so confused because I, yes, I'd been hurt. Right. You know, like obviously I had been hurt terribly in that church over and over and over and over again. But one of the things that I made sure of when I was like, even writing the letter to them was, this is not about me. Right. Like 100%, this is not about me. This is about what they're teaching people. And this is about the people that I see walking out of this church every single Sunday in either pride or despair, which is one of the things that I learned from the American gospel, like the moralistic preaching will do to you. And I I was like, I'm seeing this. This is what I'm seeing. I want answers. And they, nope, who hurt you? Wow. And I was like, I'm reading my letter now. <laughs> and I just like, I started reading it and yeah, they would correct my pronunciation of words. Um, kind wow. of, I got like some snickers a couple of times. Um, this is just pure and simple tactics for manipulation. I mean, this is, this is just sort of a squirrel sidetrack here, but I spent like four years learning how to do um, reconciliation and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And one of the main things that you have to study for, one of the main things that you have to learn is how to understand when somebody is trying to take control of the situation. Because yeah. if you're going to reconcile groups of people so that they stop fighting, you have to know how to keep control of, okay. of everybody, keep them calm. Don't let them like veer off into things that don't have, they don't pertain to what you're talking mm-hmm. about. And this just classic manipulation is so perfectly pinpointed that it makes me wonder if they're being taught this yeah. or if they just see it from one another and mimic one another because it works. Yeah. It, we're designed a certain way. And so manipulation like this, you want to take control of a person. Yeah. This is how you do it. This, 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 and this. And it's different for men and women, which is why it's important to have your husband in there because yeah. the same thing that's going to manipulate a, a woman isn't going to manipulate a man. Right. But those little snickers, uh, correcting, correcting your vocabulary, you guys, that's stuff that atheists do online there's a reason they do it because they've seen it work if they can make you feel dumb oh you've already lost this this argument now why still keep fighting they've they've already started out by devaluing everything that you're going to say because you're just hurt yeah you're bitter it's not that anything is actually wrong with us something's wrong with you an authoritative figure that wants to control this is the pure way to do it. And that's why it's so disturbing for me to hear you say these things because you, you're just saying your actual experiences, but every single time you list something like that, I'm like exactly what you would do if you were trying to manipulate. That's crazy to me. Sorry. Keep going. But that's a little squirrel. Absolutely true. And I, I think that it is something that's taught. I remember specifically hearing a quote and I think it was by Rob Bell who was talking about if they're not going to get off, if they're not going to get on the bus or if they're going to, oh, have you yeah. heard that quote? Yeah, like if they're going right. to cause a distraction on the bus or something, kick them off. Kick it was, them off. was yeah. <laughs> eventually yeah. what he said. And it reminded me of that quote because I was just like, yeah, like happening. I'm getting kicked off the bus here. Like yeah. I'm about to go flying. So like I, I read my letter. I, I said my piece, my husband was raging mad at this point. Okay. Like he was just like, you are treating her like a child. Yeah. And I cannot believe this. He, they went, they went round and round on a couple of things. Honestly, after that, I, I'm going to be, I blacked out. Mm -hmm. I just sat there. I couldn't say anything else. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to say. I knew no matter what I did say, it wouldn't be heard in the correct way. I had so much hope that they would hear me. Yeah. But in fact, what they brought me in there to tell me at the end of it was you cannot talk about your experience with anybody. So they, well, they told me specifically told you, you couldn't yeah. share what happened. Yes. So like they said, legally? not legally. They said, we want to make sure everybody knows you are no longer a part of our church wow. before you start talking about what happened in our church. So shunning, they're shunning you now. They did. That I, is a cult practice. You guys, yeah. this is, 
this is bizarre to me to hear. Yeah. Well, and then they sent out a message to all of the women that were just in my small group to make sure that they all knew that um, we had major theological differences is I think how they worded it. I lost every single one of my friends. Wow. I mean, they, they kind of like trickled out, but as it stands today, I think there's one person from that church of close to 2000 people who will wow. sometimes like my post on Facebook. Sometimes not every, like not anything that has to do with theology. the Bible, theology, Jesus, anything. Think about how manipulative that is because now all of those women know not to do what you did. Yeah. Every single woman that witnessed how much this hurt for right. you, they're going to say to themselves, I don't want to go through that. Well, and they've been taught to think that I brought it upon myself. Oh, sure. Yeah. And that this is what happens when you don't sit underneath our teaching and our leadership and you're not getting the right information. You're going out of the bounds of, of what we teach type of stuff. And it's it's, not my fault that I beat my, my wife. She's just really obnoxious. Like, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, can you guys see this from any, any other perspective? What they're saying is yeah. it's not our theology that's the problem. It's you went and you learned without asking us. But then whenever you did bring it to us, we made sure to belittle everything. And for the fact that your husband was able to say, y'all are, t- y'all are treating her like a child. If you can convince somebody to behave like a child, then you will have that authority figure, parent-like control. Yeah. And a lot of people in our situation that went through things that that like you listed, they want that because then you don't have to, you don't have to think for yourself, right? Thinking for yourself is really hard. It's hard. (laughs) Going through these things is so difficult. And if they could convince you that you just need to listen to us. Right. But what you did instead was you were like, I'm just going to read this letter. So for, for that point, they can say there's two choices. Either you're going to let us control you Mm -hmm. or we're going to shun you. None of, neither of those options are biblical folks. The sad part was, was that I had brought so many people to that church to like visit. Some of them are still there. Uh, My parents were going to that church because of me. They ended up leaving with us because they, mom, I know. Hi, you're probably going to watch this and and correct me. (laughs) She's been so supportive, but I think a lot of what I had to say to her was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And she would connect something that I said about like an experience that I had with, with an experience that she had. And she would be like, Oh, that makes sense now. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I like to think it was God (laughs) and his sovereignty. Like, honestly, I, for some reason towards the end of my time there, I would say the last like two to three months, like women were like just coming to me with these stories and unsolicited like I wasn't like putting anything out there like I wasn't like outwardly acting like I was upset um there were a few situations that happened towards the end that were very very upsetting (laughs) um but for the most part I wasn't out there letting people know I guess that I was I was looking into this and I was gonna find out the truth like that was not what I was doing um but for some reason I was getting all of these stories coming into me about these situations where women were feeling like totally like I was feeling like going through exactly what I was going through have you talked to any of them since they won't speak to me anymore even though while this was happening they did admit to you so see this is the thing that I'm saying like consider what type of tactics is happening for a woman that says I'm going through the same thing you're going through but then they see you being shunned Mm -hmm. and blacklisted and some of the stuff hopefully you'll get into in a minute that is just unbelievably Un, uh, I just it's unacceptable on so many different levels. They're going to make sure not to do that, right? Because they don't want to go through that. If, if they don't actually get the difference here, being that you actually were saved, like right. you know, your eyes were open. Right. If they don't have that, all they see is this is their whole lives. This well, that's why people don't yeah. leave the Mormon Church. They make it such a community. Yep. So it's there's a big emphasis on small groups. Right. So that's where you're going to grow. You're going to grow in your small group. You're going to find your people in your small group. You're going to learn the most in your small group. And that was one of the things that I brought up was the problem with it. Like people aren't learning anything in these small groups. Like <laughs> We're like going to coffee or like we're cleaning right. up the trail next to our church or where, you know, like we're doing like a five minute devotional and then we're walking and we're doing exercise or, you know, like that, that wasn't 
happening. I mean, in, in a select few, there it probably was. Right. Um, I can't say that everybody there was not saved. I can bet my life on it that most right. of them have heard the gospel. Mm-hmm. They've just been blinded by this idea that the church is for the lost. Right. Right. Which verdict will say it's out the loud. exact elevation message. Yeah. That is. if you got saved last Sunday, this church is no longer not for, for you. you anymore. Not this so Sunday. you can jump on board and you can help us save more people or you can go find another church. Wow. Which and is just the opposite of what the actual, and let's, let's not worry about what the Bible says. Not at it's all. supposed to be a church because these guys have hundreds of thousands of people. Right. Obviously what they're doing is working. This is a lie that you will hear all the time, but they're successful. So it's got to be successful. It's got to have a blessing of God, but you guys, the Mormons are successful. You should see how much money they have. So is Islam. That's right. Yeah. Islam is successful. It, it doesn't matter how many people that you have coming or how much money you have coming in. What matters actually is success is measured scripturally by how biblical you are, how obedient you are. And so these, from the ground up, they're creating these church plants that are just designed for lost people to come in. And you're you're actually going to benefit from staying lost at these right. churches. It's going to be a benefit for you if you hang out and you just continue to say, I don't know. Uh, just I give us know. your money yeah, so that you can feel like you're making a difference. Yep. Just keep giving us your money. We'll tell you every single week what project we tackled that week. We'll wow. let you know. They, I mean, their name is everywhere in yeah. these churches. They make sure that the community knows their name because that's, it's not knowing the name of God. Right. It's knowing the name of your church so that more people will come to your church. Yeah. That's who's getting the glory for all of their work that they're doing. They're not doing work in the community to actually help the community. Right. I mean, that the people, the individuals doing it, I'm certain actually have really good motives that they're like, Hey, this is fantastic. Right. I've been wanting to help my community and things of that nature, but the actual purpose and we're not making this up. This is in their own manuals. Mm -hmm. The the outreach is on purpose. Like everything that they're doing is a part of the training. This is how you build your, this is how you build your church. Right. It's how you build your brand. This is, that's, that's how you do it. Now, if you had to go back and do it again, what recommendation would you give to yourself looking back at it now? Honestly, just like keep reading your Bible. You can't know that you're being taught wrong things unless you are feeding yourself from right. the word. That was one thing that I neglected hugely when I was going there was that I didn't, I didn't really read my Bible. I mean, I would read, I would like the cherry pick. So I would like, or I would do the thing where like, if you open your Bible and then you just go Christian roulette. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) this is the word for, I know the things I have for you. Okay. There's my blank check for this week. Now I'm going to, you know, like it totally, I I was doing that and nobody was telling me that that was wrong. Right. So I would, I would tell myself like, keep reading, keep reading, like keep feeding yourself. But the, the hard thing is, is that you have to trust. You have to find a teacher that you trust. Yeah. You have to, because it was Martin Luther said, um, read the Bible alone, go to hell alone. Right. Yeah. Like if, if you don't have somebody like that is decide, even if they don't know you and as, as horrible as that sound, when I came out of this church, I had nobody, I didn't know. I didn't know who to turn to. So what did I do? I watched the American gospel documentary. And then I looked up all of these all guys of yeah. that were on there and I, just watched sermon after sermon. I watched the Q and A's from grace to you with like RC oh, scroll and John MacArthur. Like I watched them like they were like my like lifeline Yep. because yep. I had to have the guidance of somebody. I didn't want to. And I was very scared. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to trust anybody Yeah. when you've been manipulated, manipulated like that. Like the last thing you want to do is put your trust in another teacher. Right. Um, yeah, but you have to. Yeah. And you, you can keep your guard up for yeah, things absolutely. In, a, in a loving way. And this is one thing that I, I think is uh, encouraging is that a good solid teacher, a good solid pastor mm-hmm. wants you to pay attention in a way where if you see or hear something false that you'll notice. Yeah. That, that's something that somebody who actually cares about what they're teaching, it, that they're going to want that. They're going to desire that. And so I always encourage people, if you know that there's false teachers, um, a lot of people will message me and they'll say, Hey, well, uh, Beth Moore stuff is, is in our, our church 
store or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like your pastor might not know because yeah. she used to be somewhat solid. Sure. Your pastor might just be trusting, hey, SBC, no big deal. She must right. be good. You, you could actually be a blessing to that pastor and right. a good solid leader is going to be like, well, thank you. I didn't know about that. Right. Or they're going to be like, get out of our church, which is, you know, an excuse to get out of their church. Right. But yeah. So you can, you can be trusting mm-hmm. while still keeping a loving eye on that because right. But that's how we help one another. I really appreciate whenever people say, Hey, you listed this verse, but what you really meant was that other verse. And I'm like, my oh, brain okay. is pretty much mush at this point. <laughs> so I appreciate all the help I can get. Um, follow me around and just help me with that all the time. <laughs> Let's cut it off here and, and do you. a second, a second interview because what happens next after you leave? I'm not trying to over dramatize this at all. This legitimately is what we see in Scientology. It's what we see and not just the nice cult like that. I mean, I, there's no such thing as a nice cult, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> there are some cults that are like, okay, you don't want to really drink our Kool-Aid. That's all right. Go have somebody else's Kool-Aid. We just will shun you for the rest of your life. They didn't stop at shunning you. Yeah. They didn't stop at, at just telling everybody to ignore you. And so um, I'd really like to get into that um, with you on a part two. And, mm-hmm. and so you guys are watching this on Monday Next Monday, if Lord willing, I'll have part two because this is so important. It's it's incredibly, incredibly important that we are aware of what's happening in our own cities and what what's possibly happening to family members if if they're not involved in the background, right? Like because yeah. you're involved in it. Right. They might not even realize why they're so uncomfortable. Yes. Because they're not seeing what what you're seeing in the background. So I have like eight million other questions for you. So we'll just uh, bring you back in. Okay. You guys, this is kind of neat though, right? Like this she's literally cool. sitting next, she's sitting next to me. I'm touching her right now. Oh, weird as that. I've never done an interview like this before. This is so much fun. We're like, oh, I don't know if I should look at there. Should I look over here? Look at, it's a little I, awkward. I don't know. I don't know. The, dog, the dogs are all getting in the way and everything. But yeah, um, this has been a lot more fun yeah. than I thought it would be like. I was like, I don't know how weird it's going to be to have somebody here. Cause I mean, I squirrel so much. Like I figured we would at least no, waste I, an hour. I, I like gave you like a calming, like effect? a calming, maybe, yes. maybe? no, Round, is that not okay? You me on the subject. <laughs> like we were, we were serious. You're focused. We were professionals. Laser. Yes. Yeah. And so I think we can do it again. Totally. Um, and, and actually get through and, um, you're going to have like maybe your own podcast. I mean, Maybe we'll see what happens. I have a. Co- I started sending Lauren like little pictures, like little logos. Like, what do you think of this? It's a <laughs> contagion. Everywhere I go, I'm like contagioning people. I'm contagioning. Yes, I'm contagioning people. <laughs> it's more contagious than COVID. It's a, it is. the desire to podcast, most definitely, especially if you're an introvert. <laughs> now we're gonna get our interview buried. Oh, that's Wait. right. <laughs> I'll delete that. <laughs> this is a lot <laughs> I forgot you can't talk about COVID because if you do, then you're fake news. <laughs> Kristen, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain all of this and uh, really just your heart in wanting to help people. It's super duper important that, that the listeners see that you're not doing this to get back at anybody. You have nothing to gain and everything to lose because yeah. they have already proven how incredibly aggressive and just nasty but they'll be if you stand up to them so you're putting yourself on the line here and you guys just please be praying for her because they have genuinely genuinely shown that they are not going to put up with any sort of pushback so if you guys could be praying for Kristen thank all of you guys for watching and hopefully you guys will be praying for for Kristen praying for this next episode and we love you humble bees We'll talk to you next week, hopefully. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening, Humble Bees. This is Tulips and Honey. Over and out. I think that diamond still needs a little more polish. Yeah. We have a really good producer. We have a great producer. Okay.
I will be a blooper reel. Cool. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah. Blooper reels are fun. They are fun. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hi, Humblebees. Welcome back to Tulips and Honey. I am... <laughs> I punched my drink. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. <clears throat> we'll make it. <laughs> We're going to do this. This is how it always goes. If it helps. Hashtag okay. so not professional. Okay. Share your hair there. Share your hair there. Share your hair. And then once you... Once you, she's excited. Um, <laughs> hi, hi. It's Crystal. So you're you're legalistic. Hello. <laughs> hi. I love you, but I want you to go away. Okay. Yeah. A training book. There's a dog tail. <laughs> Stop tail. Oh, Sorry. The producer is here for emotional support. Oh, she's even got her paw on you. That's not biblical. That's not right. I can tell. And I'm not trying to over dramatize this, right? Like, I, dramatize is not a word. I'm not trying to gingivite at this. 